Hello, everybody. In the next few minutes, I will outline some of the work to you that we've done together with my colleague Sherlock Likorich at the University of Otago. My name is Marcus Wagner, and I'm working at the University of Adelaide. So the situation is as follows. Uh, around the world the globe, uh, we can find many question and answer websites and repositories from which we can take source code, from which not only we, but many others take source code as well. There are popular pages like Stack Overflow, GitHub, and SuperUser. And these pages are popular for good reason. It is very convenient to um, search for code and to simply copy and paste it over into one's code base and hope uh, that it does what one intends to achieve. Now, interestingly, this um, comes with quite a, a few number, uh, quite a number of challenges. The snippets that one copies over can be incorrect, insecure, and incomplete. And uh, we have observed this, so Sherlock and myself, but many others have done this previously as well. So this is not, not yet a contribution. Um, very often we as academics can see that students copy work over uh, into their assessments, uh, assignments, which is not fantastic, uh, especially when there's no um, citation provided. Um, but in particular, when code is copied over, uh, together with errors and rather mindlessly included, then uh, students themselves do not necessarily learn as much. Such behavior has not only been observed for students, but also in the broader uh, software engineering community. Uh, one famous example is that here on the right hand side, uh, where the Nissan Connect EV mobile app uh, suddenly contained a uh, well, so a string that was um, well part of the code snippet that was copied over from uh, Stack Overflow. So that string in particular was the app explanation. The split of Stack Overflow is coders helping coders, which is probably something that Nissan didn't want uh, to well, have as part of its app in the first place. So with such issues in mind, uh, what can we do to make the situation a little bit better? Well, we've approached this in two phases. Phase one is here in the, uh, what we explored the combination of automated program repair and static analysis in order to improve code. Static analysis can find a very broad range of flaws that identifies them. Um, they can range from um, code issues uh, in terms of uh, uh, styles, but also um, they can range all the way to security issues that have been identified. <clears throat> and the question that we wanted to answer now was, can automated program repair techniques or can genetic improvement in particular improve the health of such snippets so that developers can uh, more reliably, more safely, use code from um, repositories. Our approach was empirical, and we've started with approximately 8,000 uh, Java code snippets that had been subjected to other research over the years. These snippets were taken from Stack Overflow and uh, in some pre-processing steps, um, we've tried to increase the chances of actually uh, well, being able to compile them. For example, we would embed these code snippets in, in a class, we would import uh, certain packages, and so on. Following this pre-processing, um, well, pre we've used a, uh, or the, the very popular <clears throat> static checker called PMD <clears throat> to identify faults. As our or genetic improvement tool, we've used GIN. In, in particular, in our, well, as I already mentioned, PMD can identify a very broad range of um, issues. Our focus here was on performance because one, to the best of our knowledge, this hasn't really been done before, uh, at least a focus on performance. Uh, and two, uh, myself, I'm quite interested in performance optimization. 
<clears throat> so starting with these original 8,000 snippets, um, PMD is able to uncover um, about 30,000 violations in about 3,000 of these snippets. PMD comes with about 300 rules, and at least the version that we've trialed for, for Java. And about one third of these rules are or appear to be violated at least once. As we can see here on the table, most rule violations are or about our concern with um, coding styles, uh, best practices, design choices. Uh, but there are also, in our opinion, more interesting uh, categories such as error prone code. Uh, performance and multi-threading and security. So security is a bit underexplored in, in general here, uh, but it's a different story. Since we focus on performance, uh, let's have a quick look here in the lower half at the performance rules that have been violated. Most predominantly, um, PMD was concerned about the use of the plus equals as the operator to create new strings or to uh, concatenate strings or append strings to other strings. And uh, if I remember correctly, this is because well, using the plus equals operator actually instantiates a new object. This is not necessarily the case here for string builder, for the suggested string builder and string buffer. So that's uh, the most uh, commonly violated rule, the performance rule. Uh, others also often revolve around the use of strings, such as the second one, the third one, and a few others as well. There are also other rules uh, that are about well, that have a closer look at loops and what happens within these loops. And we will have we will see some examples later on as I put from here. So this was the preliminary investigation, um, but just using the static uh, checker on these, uh, well, initially 8,000 um, code snippets, travel snippets. We then used Jim to randomly generate single edits. Now this, um, we did focus on single edi edits for, uh, um, not because we wouldn't know any better, or we most certainly would, but because we wanted to characterize the, and the single edit space, the most basic um, neighborhoods possible, in our opinion. So you gave Jim the task to generate 20,000 um, unique single edit, uh, 20,000 single edit patches. And it came back to us with approximately 18,000 unique ones. Because sometimes the code would be relatively short, maybe just 10 to 20 lines. Um, if you perform something like a, a swap of um, for loops or a swap, a swap of certain statements, apologies, um, then uh, it's fairly likely that you end up accidentally sampling the same patch over and over again. And we ended up with 18,000 unique ones. Of these uh, 18,000 unique patches, 770, interestingly, uh, result in files that no longer show any performance issues whatsoever. Well, that's a good start. Um, now, among these, quite a large percentage actually did not compile. Um, what I want to say here is that initially, uh, we, uh, of these 18,000, roughly, uh, or one third actually compiled, which is a good number uh, because it shows that code is not as fragile as it as one might intuitively assume. And this mirrors other uh, or previous studies over the last a few years by um, performed by others as well. <clears throat> now, let's dig a little bit deeper into these 770 patches. Uh, so many of them unfortunately did not compile, uh, which points at a number of issues that we will also see later on. Uh, but nevertheless, there were 58 patches that produced compilable code that did not exhibit any performance issues. Of these, 36 are actually deleted edits that uh, simply delete to offending code. So as a consequence, it's not too surprising that the, uh, the particular performance issue has gone away. In the other cases, uh, most edits either replace the offending code or modify it. And we can see one example here on the right-hand side where uh, line um, seven is deleted or 
So it's statement 64, it's deleted. And then this particular append, uh, uh, the append character with character um, rule is no longer triggered. <clears throat> in this little study, we also noticed that different edit types are uh, invoked or resulted in um, or had non-uniform effects. Uh, for example, copy edits attracted disproportionately many violations and delete edits, they tended to perform best against uh, this particular rule, avoid instantiating objects and loops well, by simply deleting this particular instantiation. So to summarize this first phase, um, we've, we have come across um, false positives in the static analysis, uh, and there are also many trivial warnings that one could probably live without. So, so there's definitely room for improvement of uh, static an analyzers such as PMD. We've also had a massive issue with code that would not compile where PMD would, well, some rules would be triggered, some others would not be triggered. So, uh, this probably points at work that one has to do in the AST processing on PMD's side. It might also be possible to improve PMD at the rule level by crowdsourcing rules through um, repositories or QA sites like Stack Overflow through the edits, for example. On the genetic improvement side, um, We've also identified a number of directions where one could potentially be doing a lot better. For example, uh, assume the following situation. If we as the framework know that there is an issue with a uh, loop that starts in line 100, we probably do not necessarily have to do much with the code in lines 1 to 99. Not very much. So biasing then our edits towards the area of interest is well, based on the feedback from the static analyzer, static checker, is maybe way forward. In addition, we noticed that many code transformations at one, at one were, well, because we limited ourselves to deletes, uh, replacements, swaps, and copies, um, they seemed rather, um, well, inadequate. So more work needs to be done there. And of course, quite trivially, we could look at different uh, functional properties as well. Now, one thing that I uh, had forgotten to mention is the following. Um, we do not have test suites for these 3,000 or 8,000 uh, code snippets. So consequently, we are a little bit limited to by what we as humans can understand and also by just this other binary um, well, check, does it compile or does it not compile? So this was part one of the study. Let's look into part two. Let's dive a little bit further into uh, the results so far, particularly into these 58 uh, patches that managed to get rid of all the uh, performance issues. So among others, we had these one, two, three examples um, where either code would be deleted and such, and thus we would, for example, here uh, no longer have the addition of an empty, empty string which would uh, irritate PMD. In another case, we had a, a uh, well, um, possibly a, a false positive or false negative actually. So the rule would no longer be triggered. It is avoid array loops. It would still very much be an avoid an array loop, so a loop going over an array. Um, but it seems that PMD's rule uh, expects a increment of the index after, after its use, not before. So we again looked at, or we looked at the data, uh, at least 58 single edits. Um, and uh, yeah, in 54 of these cases, uh, a single issue was removed. And in the other four cases, even two issues have been removed through a single edit. Uh, so this may be a little bit remarkable. Both Sherlock and I then went ahead and we manually annotated these 58 mutations with a focus on whether or not a human would deem the mutation acceptable. So there were two steps. First, we described the change to the semantics of the program to the best of our abilities in the absence of any documentation. 
And the second step was we tried to answer the question, uh, are the semantics retained? Again, in the absence of any documentation test suite, of course. And our possible answers were yes, mostly, or no. We performed two rounds of analysis to ensure some consistency in our manual analysis. Now, before we jump to the results, um, so our 44 uh, well, code snippets, the original ones, they exhibited this particular list of, uh, or they had this particular list of rule violations, again, starting with um, well, string buffer appends. Um, there was a more uh, focus on avoiding error loops in contrast to what we've seen a few slides ago, and so on. Among, now let's come to the maybe interesting part. Among the results, uh, we noticed the following. So, of course, again, 36 of these mutations were the result of delete statements and uh, delete line operations. Um, in We would say that in only two of the cases uh, of these 58, the semantics were retained. We think that in six of the, AK, uh, the other cases, most of the semantics are retained. And in all other cases, there has been a major change uh, to the semantics, for example, because an entire loop has been deleted or yeah, something else, something major happened. And we did notice, just as before, uh, that the 50, uh, among, uh, almost all fixing mutations, presumably fixing mutations, end up removing the offending code. Um, we did also notice that in two cases, PMD should actually have, uh, well, still be reported, measure should still have uh, reported the performance issues related to the void area loops, even though technically, uh, well, so it did not mention that they, they did not flag um, array loops, even though very clearly they were still very much present. <clears throat> From this, there are a number of implications and also threats to our little study. Um, first, we notice that uh, well, it appears that delete statements and delete line operations they result in fewer syntactic code anomalies than other operations. Also notice that GINs fixes tend to come at expense of changes in code semantics, very typically, at least based on the operators that we've used. Right? Um, and thus, we, but well, because of the change in the semantics and in the absence of um, test suite at the moment, this necessitates quite a, some deeper contextual probing, probing of the repair outcomes. But this is quite normal for GI. One should always inspect very carefully the patch that, uh, or not only in GI but also APR, uh, automated program repair. Uh, one should very carefully uh, investigate the uh, suggested patch. Thirdly, we noticed that the uh, uh, that removing offending code it seems to have been the most effective uh, problem repair strategy. If it's broken, if you delete it, then technically it's in most cases gone after afterwards. Of course, mm. we also noticed that at times PMD was uh, confused by Jin's mutations in the sense that um, yeah. It's, it did not respond the right, or it did not perform adequately, as mentioned before, um, or in other cases, it had um, just uh, well, difficulties um, parsing non-compilable code. This was a bit interesting to us because some rules would still be invoked or, or um, come up as violated and some others would not. So this brings me now to the very end here. Uh, if you have any questions, please do let us know. Contact us by email. Code is online, and we are looking forward to pushing this further in order to make code uh, healthier uh, on yeah, many different levels. Thank you. <laughs>